Hi and welcome to today's Food for Thought live video. Hi, my name is Jodie Bunting and welcome to our Food for Thought today where I'm screening, uh, we're going very technical today for today's Food for Thought because I'm sharing my screen with you because I'm going to share with you results from my Freestyle Libra. So you may remember two weeks ago I fitted this device and basically it's constantly reading my blood sugar. I'm going to share with you the results today. So first of all I am going to remove it. So I did uh, pop it on. Now the thing that I did re didn't realise when I did it last time is it's actually got a needle in it. So you can see, if I hold it up to the camera look, you can see it has actually got a large needle in it. So the last time I tried one of these, but it's actually not a needle. I knew it wasn't a needle. Somebody was trying to tell me it was a needle, but it's not, look, because it is, is a piece of um, like plastic. Um, basically, the, the Freestyle Lieber number one, um, the, the technology was that it's censored through the uh, sweat. Uh, but somebody was telling me this uh, technology, actually, that goes into your skin and into your blood. So I'm still confused whether what's the truth with that. But either way, it didn't hurt. And you can see uh, there's obviously a little bit of residue where the, the sticky stuff was, but actually um, it didn't hurt. So for those people who left comments saying it is a needle, it's not a needle, guys. It's not a needle. Anyway, right, let's move on to the results. Um, and I'm just going to go through a few slides here that I've got ready for you. So first of all, um, if you want to do the 14 day trial, anybody that's got diabetes, diabetes one or diabetes two, uh, there is a link. If you just search free sample freestyle Libra or I'll put the link on the top of this video. So if you'd like to try one and you're a diabetic type one or a diabetic type two, there's a free 14 day trial. So this will link with your phone for 14 days and give you all the results. If you're not a diabetic or you want to continue using these, I'll put the price on the screen. It's 48 29 including VAT, 57 95 uh, And I'll show you now what you can get. First of all, um, you can link your sensor up with your doctor's surgery. So it's called the LibreView and you can connect so your diabetic diabetes center can actually view all the results if you want them to see it that is and then the other one is the the viber link up so because i've got this app on my phone you can actually link it up with my app so i can actually see your results you know the technology is just amazing so i just wanted to show you that feature with it um and then these are some of my reports then from the last 14 days. Um, you can see at the bottom of the screen, I can actually choose the results from seven days, 14 days, 30 days or 90 days. So this is just a little bit of sensor usage. Um, so you can see for seven days, I scanned 28 times, four scans per day on average, uh, and roughly 88% of the data was captured. Um, so this is a really important one. So as you know, uh, you get a long term reading and what they do is they can estimate this uh, long term reading. And this is basically your blood sugar um, for the last three months. And mine's approximate, approximated at 6.5, which is fantastic. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, my next slide is the average for the last 14 days. So if you have a look at the bottom there, you can see it does say the last 14 days. Uh, and you can see I'm completely in range there. Generally around that lunch time, uh, early morning, coming down to 6.8. Uh, and then quite late in the evening, after you've had your evening meal, uh, going to 8.9. So that was my highest average low glucose event uh, in the 14 days I only actually had two uh, very low glucose events so again that is great and I'll explain a little bit more about that shortly uh, time in target uh, again this was over the last 14 days for the first week which you're going to see in a minute I actually wasn't high at all but I did do a few <laughs> experiments just to see what would happen if I had alcohol what I've 
if I did have bread? What if I did have doughnuts? Uh, and I'll be sharing those results with you in a moment. But even though that I was uh, having those treats, I still stayed in um, the healthy range, which is point between 3.9 and 10%, 70% of the time, which is again, fantastic. And you can see my low under 3.9 was actually only 1% over the whole two weeks. Right, the daily patterns. Uh, again, you can see here, uh, when I'm first waking up, my you can see that the, the natural um, blood sugar are being released at 6 a.m. or just before when I generally wake up. So this is why you've got that little pattern. Uh, and then you can also see when I eat around lunchtime, it starts going up. And then when I eat again about five o'clock or six o'clock, that's when it raises it to its highest. So for those of you that do eat at 8 p.m., 9 p.m. and wonder why you have interrupted sleep, this graph just proves exactly why. So if you can leave four hours before going to bed, before your last meal, then again, it's really going to help your blood sugar with a little asterisk. I will come back to that in a moment because I find out through this device why I wake up at 4 a.m. most days. Okay, let's move on. All right, so we're now gonna move on to the daily graphs. Now, as I said, the first week you'll see that I was in my range. So my range is just, it's 3.9 up to uh, just under 10 and you can see that's green there on the screen uh, and my first afternoon of wearing the sensor uh, you can see I was staying in that really low and it's not too up and down either uh, I think I had a meal about five on there so you can see where it was slightly went up so let's move on to the first morning and this is where you start to see uh, the interesting bits because you can see where it's gone red so basically, I've woken up about four o'clock there. Um, blood sugar's been okay, and then you can see about, um, what's that, 10.30? It's really dropped and gone into the red, but it's not like gone massively low, so it's nothing dangerous. But again, you do need to be look, looking at maybe what you're doing to cause that. Uh, I think I may have been exercising at that point. So again, that can disrupt. So if you are exercising, you do feel a little bit faint or you have got diabetes and you, you're noticing that you are feeling uh, a low blood sugar, then obviously it is great to have a snack before you exercise. But generally day one was fine. Now you can see at midnight, it's starting to go red there. So I think on this first day, I'd had vegetables and avocado. So just keep that in your mind when I go on to the next day because you can see uh, from that vegetables and avocado, my blood sugar not only went down at midnight, uh, there's a little low point as well at about four o'clock, as I said, when I'm generally waking up. And then you see about seven o'clock as well, I really dipped down into um, red again. Uh, moving through the day, it didn't really jump up when I ate. Um, but you can see in the afternoon, I had a little bit of a lull. So again, if you're the sort of person that do, you know, you feel like you need an afternoon nap. Again, this is where having one of these devices, you can actually physically see the chemicals in your body, your blood sugar is going low. And this is why you're needing that afternoon nap. It's actually nothing to do with maybe you're exhausted. It is actually to do with your, your blood glucose. Uh, but then you can see I've eaten something because again, I've scanned and I've seen my uh, blood sugar is low. Uh, and this is why I've eaten something and it's gone back up and then slowly come back down again. Okay, let's go on to the next day. Uh, and again, it's very similar to the other day. This one is more stable and more at the bottom there. Exactly the same thing. You can see that after I've eaten my lunch, um, it has gone low. So as we've said before, generally what happens when you eat carbohydrates and not enough protein or not enough fat is the fact that your blood sugar goes up and crashes back down. Uh, and this is why people get addicted to crisps or sweets or any sort of sugar product because it's not actually the you're not eating something. It's the fact that it takes your blood sugar so up it crashes it back down. So that's kind of what is happening there after I'm having my uh, keto shake in the morning. Um, it's not gone lower than three, so it's nothing to worry about too much, but just to explain maybe why that color is. And you can see before 6 p.m. that I've eaten, and that's why the uh, graph has gone up. Uh, let's move on to the next day. Now, it didn't capture all the data, but I'm just gonna show you those two days, because on purpose here, I had salmon, 
and I had liver the next day. And you can see, because these are what's known as high purine foods, this didn't allow my blood sugar to go too low. Okay, so just look at that. So look at the two days before when I had just vegetables. Look, they kept going down in the red. Where When I had the uh, salmon, and then the following day that when I had the liver, because there was more physical purine and more nutrients for my body to digest, this is why my blood sugar was much more stable. So again, if you, if you do go on a vegan diet or you eat a lot of vegetables, this is where you need to be really careful because your body is just not getting enough nutrients. Your blood sugar is going to be up and down. You're going to be in a bad mood. You're not going to sleep well. If you know any vegans like that, please let them know this information. Um, but again, this is why it's so important to have oily fish a couple of times a week have some uh, organ meats a couple of times a week because it's just full of nutrients and it does keep your body feeling full and feeling good. Okay, next couple of days, uh, I kind of learned from that and I was probably eating a few more calories because my whole idea of this 14 day, I wanted to see what the foods I was eating does to my blood sugar. So this is why I'm trying to perfect it and not go into the red. I'm gonna go the other way in a few moments. So that was the 14th of March. Right, 15th of March. Right, here we go. This is the start of the story. So this was last Monday when I went to Manchester and this is where I started to do the tests on the upper scale. So you can see I slept really, really well there. As I said, I'd had the liver on the Sunday. The Monday was normal. Um, and then in the afternoon, I had some donuts. So you can see my blood sugar started going up and down. Might have been a little bit because I was exercising, but as I said, it will be because of the sugar in the donuts as well. Now, the good thing about donuts is it's not just sugar. It's not just carbs. Obviously, there is some uh, fat in there as well. So this is why it didn't drastically go sky high and then zoom back down. This is why it's gone up slowly. And you can see I've obviously eaten something as well quite late there. So I've eaten about nine o'clock and this is why the blood sugar has gone back up, but again, not too high. Right, now let's have a look at the next day. This is the 16th. Um, so let's dissect this. So what's happened there is, so I've eaten something quite late on. So we must have eaten about nine or 10 o'clock on the Monday evening. And what's happened is, why I've been sleeping, you can see at 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. my blood sugar went off the scale and hit 12. And again, if you look at the last week, it's been nowhere near that. So what did I have on that Monday evening? I think, I think we had a kebab or something. So again, a lot of bread, um, a lot of uh, food, basically. That's what is taking my blood sugar so high. You can see it doesn't really stay in the danger zone for uh, too much time. And naturally it does come back down straight away. So it's nothing too um, scary when you look at these graphs. Um, and you can see for the rest of the day, went back down to six, didn't go too low. Uh, and then obviously as I'm eating again, it crept back up. Uh, the next day, <laughs> <laughs> Actually quite good control the next day, look, throughout the day. And then again, because I'm eating quite late on, so for those of you that do eat generally 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock, you can see exactly what happens to your blood sugar. It goes out of control, just as maybe when you're putting your head down to sleep. And then throughout the night, you can see it goes, it stays really, really high. Uh, and this is where maybe you can't sleep or you wake up in the morning, feel like you haven't slept good at all because your blood sugar is basically uh, all over the place. Now, because I'm sharing my screen, I can't actually see the comments, guys. So we'll address your questions later. Uh, but if you if you recognize any of these symptoms with your sleep or your mood or anything like that, please leave a comment and I will leave my feedback afterwards. And you can see I've eaten quite late on there. Again, after nine o'clock I've eaten and this is why it's gone to almost 18. Uh, very similar the next sort of day. You can see even at 4 a.m. there, my blood sugars was really, really high. Um, <clears throat> the one thing I did notice there was that things like donuts that do have the fat in 
had less of a reaction than when I was having things like bread. So bread was probably the worst things and gave me these worst spikes, purely because if you know anything about bread, it is highly processed carbohydrates, which turns into sugar straight away. And white bread especially, your body does turn into sugar instantly. So this is why if you eat a lot of pasta and if you eat a lot of bread, uh, your blood sugar is completely off the scale straight away as soon as you're eating it uh, because your uh, body is treating it just like sugar when it's processing it. Um, we're nearly at the end of the day there. Uh, you can see it's not so high and low there, although it's obviously still out of the range there on the 20th of March, and this is Sunday. So this is yesterday. Um, yeah, so nothing really different there. And then this was today. Uh, you can see I did sleep. I think I did get up about five today. So all I was going to say about sleep, if you generally look, that day it doesn't really count, that day doesn't, but all these other ones, what I've been noticing was that my blood sugar is definitely affected by going too low. Uh, and as I said right at the beginning, just having things like salmon and having things like um, liver was really helping me. Uh, someone is calling me. That's quite annoying, isn't it? I don't know who's calling me, but I don't want to answer it why I'm live here on Facebook. Stop calling me whoever's calling me, I can't see. Um, right, so that was my final uh, details of those graphs and I'll just go up to the last one and that's the last bit of information guys. So thank you for joining me on this Facebook Live. Uh, it's now gone to an infinitive window. Let me try and get my camera back and that was it guys thank you for joining me as i said i will share uh, more information oh, i'm back i will share more information on this uh if you'd like to give me your comments and what uh affects your mood guys because even if you don't have one of these generally if you write down how you're feeling after sorts of foods um, you will start to uh, notice a pattern like i did i just love doing stuff like this uh, and again, if I find out in the future that maybe I can't sleep, uh, then I will definitely be getting another one of these uh, and trying to fix my sleep. But big up liver, big up salmon. Uh, I definitely know after a meal of that, it's definitely helping my sleep. Right. Thank you for joining me, guys. I will turn off Facebook Live now if I can um, work out how to turn it off. It's a bit scary showing your screen, isn't it? Especially when you don't know what you're pressing. But yes, I can see the comments here. Tina, it is interesting. Uh, and defo have lulls in the day and don't eat a great deal of protein in the day. Yes, so uh, protein is a magical thing. Right, that's it, guys. Thank you for joining me. I will be back. I'm not sure whether I'm doing it live or not, but this is my Aldi box of chocolate, which is probably not good to, to mention when we're talking about blood sugar, is it? But I'll be back uh, and I'll be uploading the reviews for Aldi tomorrow. I've got to do it tomorrow. So you'll see lots of videos over on youtube.com forward slash Jodie Bunting. Thank you for joining me. Bye, bye.